I'm at the Lambda homepage of AWS and I'm going to go to the create function thing here. I'm going to author one from scratch. I'm going to call this thing a calculator just because it's simple. And I'm going to choose Python 3.7 as my runtime. And I'm just going to stick to the default architecture here uh, and keep everything else as is. We're going to click on create function. And so now we're going to be creating a Lambda function called calculator. And while this thing is going, um, I'm going to pull up Notepad++, uh, plus plus, and I've got this template here that's basically defining the Lambda function, uh, and the actual business logic that we're going to be doing in here. Um, so right now we've got something that's just very basic, uh, and all it's doing is printing out this hello world uh, statement. Um, but we want to do something more fancy, like add some numbers together. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up back this uh, little notepad thing that I'll then paste into the actual AWS console. Um, so I'm just going to make this half the page. And so um, the very first thing we want to do here inside of our Lambda function is actually parse out the parameters from the URL that we're getting. So if someone's asking to add two and three, for instance, we need to get that. And so the way we do this is as follows. So I'll say x gets and then the event and event is really just a JSON dictionary and it's query string parameters just like that it's exactly like that and i'm going to say that there's going to be something in my query string uh, that is called x so we're going to grab whatever the value is for that key um, and then i'm just going to copy this a few times so we're going to do this for x uh, as well for y and finally um, we'll do like operation because my calculator should be able to do more than just add um, so i'll have some other key in there called op and so now that we've done that, uh, the next thing I like to do uh, just to be a good programmer <laughs> is to make sure that we log in all the inputs that go into our Lambda function so we know uh, what our users are actually doing with our stuff. So uh, I'm going to do a print statement and I'm going to use an F string here. And I'm just gonna do the following. So do X and then you can pass in the actual var variable name like that. So Y, Y and operation is operation. So we're just logging to our console what's going on. Um, and now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to prepare a response body um, for our HTTP response that will ultimately get sent back to our users. Uh, and so in this case, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to start out by defining an empty dictionary, call it res body. And then I'm also going to uh, pass in the uh, I'm going to populate in basically the inputs so that the user can see what they gave me to see what my output is. So um, I'm just going to give them back x, x, and uh, be consistent with our spacing. And uh, we'll do op gets up. And another thing I want to make note of here is a little bit of error checking or edge cases um, is that when we're grabbing query string parameters from the HTTP request that goes to our uh, Lambda function, it's going to be in a string format. And so if we try to do something like add strings together, it's just going to concatenate those strings and not actually add the strings together. So what we want to make sure we do here is something like this, where we are uh, typecasting the actual values to uh, integers and not strings. So we're specifically telling Python to treat these inputs as integers so that we're not going to make that mistake, hopefully. Um, and then finally, I'm going to have uh, a little answer thing. So I'll do res body answer. And then it'll just be something simple, like uh, I'll define an add method and I'll pass in x and y. Um, let me just do that real quick. So we'll define add. Okay, so we've defined that method. And now that we've got a body for our HTTP response to go back, we're going to actually create that HTTP res response. So again, just starting out with an empty dictionary, then we're going to give it a status code. Um, I'm gonna call this HTTP res, HTTP res. And this is where you need to be careful with capitalizations. This is going to be a 200, which means success. HTTP res, and then headers. And the headers here 
Uh, I'm going to init also as just an empty dic within my dictionary. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create a value within the headers dictionary. I'm going to call that content type. And this is going to be equivalent to uh, application JSON, just so that we are telling uh, the browser how to interpret the uh, response that it's getting. And then finally, we're going to actually call the JSON package here to change this dictionary into uh, an object that can be serialized into our body. So uh, HTTP res and body gets json dot dumps res body perfect and finally what i'm going to do is we're just going to return the http response and so there you go so this is the actual logic that will go into my lambda function um, and so thank you for bearing with me uh, now what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this i'm going to maximize this window paste in that good stuff I'm going to make sure to save this with Control S and then hit Deploy. And so now we've just uh, updated the actual uh, Python behind the calculator Lambda function. And so next here, what we're going to do is actually go to our API gateway uh, dashboard in the AWS console. And I'm not going to go with HTTP API. I'm going to actually go with the REST API. Click on Build. And I'm just going to hit OK. I'm going to create a new API. And I'll call this my first API. And I'm going to stick with the regional endpoint type. And I'm going to create it. I'm going to add a resource into uh, this thing. I'm going to call this the calculator resource. Create resource. And then I'm also going to create a method under that resource. It's going to be a get method. And this is where we're going to say, that when someone hits the this particular endpoint with a GET request, uh, we're going to be integrating this with our Lambda function. And another very important box to check here is this Lambda proxy integration. The reason why that's so important is because uh, if we don't check this, then uh, the event object or data uh, file will not get passed into our Lambda handler. So we do need to make sure that this box is checked, otherwise we'll get errors. Um, and then finally, uh, we're going to tell it what specific Lambda function to actually call when someone hits this particular endpoint. In our case, we call that the calculator. And it should autofill like this if you've created it successfully. Um, and I'm going to stick with the default timeout. I'm going to hit save. And I'm good with all this stuff, so I'm going to hit OK. And so now uh, that we've done all this stuff, um, one thing I think is really cool to do is to test it and um, it is entirely possible that we might get some errors, uh, but we'll see, so we're gonna hit test. And this is where we can actually pass in some parameters into uh, the UI here, which is pretty cool. So I'm gonna say X gets one and Y gets two, and I'll say operation gets, you know, uh, add. And um, so now that I've passed in some uh, stuff for my params, I'm gonna hit test here, and we can see that it was smart enough to uh, grab the X's uh, in my response body. Uh, unfortunately though, my answer is still incorrect. It is concatenating these strings. Um, so I'll need to do some further debugging there. Uh, but what you can see here is that it is working as expected uh, minus the actual business logic itself. Uh, it's not doing what we hope, um, but uh, it does give you some very nice uh, logs to read um, much better than what you get if you just went directly here and then clicked on deploy api which i'm going to do anyways um, and also if you do deploy this api if you actually wanted to test this in your browser uh, the way you would do that is uh, you hit deploy api and then i'm going to have to create a new stage here call it whatever you like i'm going to call it dev click on deploy and so now i'm going to expand out the stages that i have and i'm going to copy this guy I'm going to open up back uh, Notepad right here. I'm going to make a new file. I'm going to paste this in. Uh, and the reason why I did that is because you also want to pass in the query string parameters. So if you do question mark x equals, and then we'll try like five, 
ampersand y equals eight, ampersand op equals, and I'll call it add. Uh, that is how you're gonna actually specify or build your URL from that URL endpoint, um, just like this. So now that we've done this, I'm gonna hit save changes. And we should be able to just open up a new page like that, paste in this guy. And we can see that our uh, Lambda function is more or less working here, except for the fact that the uh, business logic that it's doing is not right. And the reason is that uh, when we are actually preparing our response body, even though I was typecasting X, I wasn't actually changing the value of X itself. I was literally just uh, typecasting uh, the value of X, but that was specific to that res body dictionary. So what I needed to do uh, is go into the add method itself. And then in here, I can just ensure that I am doing the typecasting correctly by doing this. So I'm changing the actual value of X itself. And I want to change the actual value of Y itself to be of type integer and not of type string. And then when I control S to save this, and then I deploy this, uh, now, when I go to my URL endpoint here, I apologize, it's really small, um, but basically when I go in here and I change these things to be other things, like, you know, if I want to add seven and let's do 10, something crazy, uh, hit add, we can see that now our uh, calculator add method is working as expected. So I uh, just wanted to close with that. Thank you all for watching. Hope everyone's doing well. Talk to you guys next time.